Hello everybody and welcome back. This is Game Scott. We're ranking the initial 25 rounds of Fall Guys because there will be more rounds added into the game as seasons go on in game seasons, not like the actual you know, fall, winter, all that stuff, like the you know, seasons. Um, but we're going to be ranking the initial 25 that the game will have at launch in, uh, you know, what's it called? In celebration of the release of Fall Guys. Because this has been, I've been excited for this game since it was announced at E3 in, I think, 2019. Uh, I've been excited for this game since uh, it's uh, been announced. And uh, I played the beta for a bit on PS4, so I'm familiar with... Uh, the, the, the games, the different rounds, there are a few different types around, there's races, team games, uh, and a bunch of different stuff, survival games, so we're just gonna go through each of the 25 rounds that will be available to play at launch, and we're just gonna get right into it, so without further ado, we'll just go right down the line. I don't, I did put these in a certain order whenever I made them, but I think it still randomized them. I named them like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Up to 25, and I don't think this is the order of which they were. So I don't know how they arrange them. It doesn't matter. We're going to be ranking all 25. We'll start off with Jump Club. This is the this is a survival game, and this is not the, uh, the final game. That's Jump Showdown. Jump Club, you just got one little barrier on the bottom that you have to jump over, and you have a, a double... Um, swinger, a, a full line swinger at the top that you have to, you know, jump over the bottom green one, but not be running into the top one. Um, so this is just a survival game. You have to be one of, you know, X amount of people to not die. And after so many people have been eliminated, you have qualified into the next round. Jump Club, I'm going to put up in the a tier. I don't know if that was a voice crack or not, um, so we'll just say it wasn't. Uh, Jump Club is a lot of fun. Um, there can be some shenanigans involved, and I think as the game exists for a longer amount of time, there are going to be more and more people that uh, engage in shenanigans, which I'm kind of not looking forward to, but I think it will add another element that hasn't been super duper uh, involved in the uh, beta. Like, don't get me wrong, people do grab other people. It's not been non-existent. Um, but I think as the game goes on and exists for a longer amount of time, more and more people are going to start grabbing others and try to mess them up and in involve in shenanigans and sabotage. All right. But uh, Jump Club, I think, is an awesome game. It's really fun. Um, the, the swirly things, they do get faster as time as the game goes on, so that adds an element of intensity. It does start off rather slow, but it, it does speed up pretty quickly. Next up is Block Party, another survival game where you just get walls that come out at you and you have to either, you know, just exist in the space that the walls won't push you off, and other times there are like little ledges between the walls that you'll have to jump over as well. So not only do you have to just stand in the spot where the walls will not be, you have to actually jump over a ledge or else you get pushed off as well. Block Party I'm also going to put up in the A tier. Because um, initially the, I thought it was super easy to not die. But lately, I don't know if it's just me being worse, or what happened, if they tweaked anything a little bit, but if you have a decent amount of people in the game, and whenever you jump over a ledge, if there's a lot of other people around, or you jump at a weird timing and maybe hit your foot off the ledge while jumping, or anything happens, you can fall, and you take like a second or two to recover to stand up, and if it's towards the end of the game, um, and you fall, there's a pretty big chance that the other platform is going to come at you too fast 
uh, for you to be able to recover. Because they also, in this game as well, the blocks do come up at a quicker pace as the game goes on. Uh, this one, aside from, or apart from Jump Club, I think there is technically a eliminate limit, but there's also a time limit in this game as well. So it's like 18 people have to be eliminated or everyone survives for two minutes. Usually in this game, it's the time limit that ends more than so many people get eliminated. Um, but there is Jump Club, I believe people have to get eliminated. There is no time limit for Jump Club. But Block Party, there is a time limit as well. Uh, I've never been in a game where people got eliminated. So many people got eliminated before the time limit expires. Uh, but Block Party, I think, is a lot of fun. Um, especially because, again, it is slightly more challenging. I don't know, again, maybe it's just me. But uh, this last weekend of the beta that I played Block Party, it did seem a little bit more challenging. It, looked, it seemed like I was falling more when jumping over the ledges. Maybe it was just me. But I like the game with the extra little bit of challenge in there. Um, it can get pretty hectic, especially towards the end. Rollout. I'm going to put in the B tier. Rollout's another survival game. I think it's the last survival game, sort of. We'll, we'll see. I don't know. Um, but Rollout is similar to Jump Club, and you have to have so many people get eliminated. There's no time limit. All you have is there's five or six little... Uh, roll rolling platforms and each other one will you know alternate so at the end the platform spins slowly to the left the next one it rolls to the right the next one rolls to the left right and it alternates um, and you also have some obstacles there are walls there are gaps in the platform so you can't just stay on a platform forever um, well you couldn't either anyway because you know it rolls and if you if it goes you can't just be standing on the platform while it's upside down, or else you'll fall. Um, so this is another game kind of similar to Jump Club, where I think as the game's existence goes on, a lot more shenanigans will be involved. Because this one is a maybe the longest game, um, especially without a time limit, because there are some games that have time limits. Um, but still, even then, I feel like this this game can go on a while, especially if there are no shenanigans involved. Um, so you have to really watch out for people, um, especially the grabbers. You don't want to be running into people. You don't want to. You want to be careful because if you run into someone who's a grabber, grabbers it seems grabbers don't even care about their themselves. They just care about ruining other people's day. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, most of the time, anytime I see a grabber in rollout successfully like push someone off or pull someone into a gap, I see the grabber themselves also fall very shortly after. So like the grabbers, you really got to watch out for them because they have no care in the world about self-preservation. They just want to ruin other people's day. So people really are the biggest obstacle in this. Um, I've rarely died um, because of the obstacles. There's like just little poles, there are walls and stuff. The walls are maybe safeguards more than obstacles. Um, really the only time I've died in this I can think of is interactions with other people. <clears throat> so roll out. I'm going to put it in the B tier. I enjoy it, but it's not the best survival game. I'd much rather play Jump Club or Block Party than roll out. Perfect match, I think, is a agreed upon sentiment. Sentiment that this is probably a D tier game. All it is, you don't even have to do anything. You could close your eyes until. Um, well, first of all, what the game is, there's like 16 platforms. It's a square grid, I think 16, 4x4. Four four. Um, in each platform, there's only three rounds. Each platform has fruits on it. I think the first round has like two fruits, the second round has four, and the third round I think has six. I don't know. But platforms, they'll flash up with fruits like grapes or cherries, like in the uh, picture, the thumbnail here. Um, and then after like 10 or 15 seconds, a uh, uh, fruit will flash on the screen, whether it's grapes or cherries. And if it's a grape flashes on the screen, then you have to go stand on a platform that has a grape on it. 
And then that just proceeds for another two rounds, um, but with more fruits. So the second round might have grapes, cherries, watermelons, and apples. And then, you know, the watermelon will flash on the screen after 15 seconds. you got to stand on a watermelon platform. Um, but it's just super not great because you don't really have to memorize it. You can just go to the platform everyone else is on. Um, another reason why it's not great is because it affects the rest of the, the show, which is like the whole big game. Like each, each show has five rounds that you play, five mini games that you play. So the show is what uh, uh, the whole game is called. These are rounds, I believe is the technical term they've made. Um, but perfect match, rarely anyone dies in the game. And there's never going to be more than five rounds. So if, if you get perfect match, it can lead to a really hectic, large final round, which is, it kind of messes up the balance of everything. Because I've seen perfect match games where, like, usually, like, two or three people die. And that's just, like, it doesn't add extra rounds based on the amount of people in the game. It just has five rounds. And the last round, the fifth round, is the final round. And it pulls from the final round games. Um, so perfect match, not only is it not super great, it kind of also affects, I think, negatively the rest of the show that you play, leading to really large rounds. All right, tail tag, this is solo tail tag. I'm going to put this up in the A tier as well. I think tail tag is super duper cool. Um, there's, I don't know how many tails spawn at the start of the game, probably depends on how many people are in the round at the start to begin with. Um, but so many people spawn with a tail attached to them. And their goal is just to last, like, I think it's a two minutes or something, a minute and a half maybe, I don't know. they got to last the round with a tail. And they don't really have to last the round with the tail. They just need to make sure that when the timer hits zero, they have a tail. Um, so tail tag is super fun. Um... I don't think I've played solo tail tag that much, to be honest, so I'm not sure if it's the same course layout as team tail tag or not. I don't think it is. Um, so I can't really say anything about the level design of tail tag, just because I forget. Uh, but the, the idea itself, I think solo tail tag is fun. It, it's pretty well balanced. It kind of sucks, you know, if you have a tail for... 1 minute 59 seconds, and then it's grabbed away with 1 second on the clock, and you end up losing. That sucks, but hey, the game is meant to just be fun. Don't, no, nobody's taking this game seriously. At least I hope. <laughs> At least I hope. This game, Fall Guys itself, not Tail Tag. Fall Guys is just meant to be a fun, casual party game full of mini games. It's a lot of fun. Don't, don't take it seriously. Don't, like, rage throw your controller if you get eliminated. Be like, I had my tail for 119 seconds and it gets stolen one second left. I got eliminated. Blah, blah, blah. Don't, don't do that. It, it's just a fun game. <laughs> just rejoin up and start a new show. Uh, so tail tag, I like a bunch. It's super fun. Team tail tag, I'm going to put in the B tier. Just because... Actually, you know, I'm going to put... Team Tail Tag in the C tier, just so we can have a game fill up uh, this, the C call. Team Tag, Team Tail Tag, I don't like as much because it's exactly what it says. It's, it's Tail Tag, but in teams. I think usually there's four teams in Team Tail Tag. It might depend on what round you play it as. Is this round three or four or something? Or two, I think. Um... There might be three teams, but I think usually it's four. I forget. I don't know. Um, but this one, it kind of sucks because there's nothing you can do, really. Like, you could, if you spawn with a tail and live and keep your tail for two minutes, that's great. You could still lose. Or you could, you know, run around for 30 seconds, get a tail, and keep it for the last minute and a half, and you still lose. So, like, there's only so much that you can do. You can't really grab two tails. You can't have multiple tails on you. So you really have to rely on your team for this one because there is only so much that you, yourself, individually can do. There are other team games where you can have a lot more of an effect, I feel personally at least. Uh, but Team Tail Tag, you can really only contribute one point at the end of the day, 
And I think that's kind of... <clears throat> <clears throat> so, Team Tail Tag, I'm going to put in the C tier. Egg Scramble, I think might be the best team game out there. I love it. Egg Scramble, it's, it's, it's kind of what Fall Guys is really about. It's hectic, it's chaotic, it's madness. I love it. At the start of the game, th this one is only a three-team three specific. Um, because that's the way the level is designed. There's three different nets, three different areas, whatever you want to call them. So this game has to be a three-team game. Each team spawns at their corner, and in the center are, you know, a bunch of eggs. You gotta go, you and your team gotta go grab some eggs, bring them back to your base. In this one, only one team is eliminated. So you just gotta have not the least amount of eggs. You gotta have the second most or the most eggs in your zone, in your base, when the timer hits zero. And also mixed in in the middle at the beginning of the game are some golden eggs, which count as three points, which are super cool. Um, so Egg Scramble is just the super hectic, super fun. I think it's what Fall Guys is really about. This, this uh, mini game, yeah, like I said, I think it perfectly exemplifies what Fall Guys is about. And of course, once all the eggs are gone from the middle, then people run over to other people's bases and try to steal their eggs. And hint, hint, it's really easy to defend. So if you uh, get out of the initial onslaught of grabbing eggs from the middle, uh, and you have like the second most or the most, you really just want to protect your eggs. You don't got to go get other people's eggs. If you're in a, in a place to... Uh, you know, not be eliminated when the timer hits zero, then just protect your eggs. And it's really easy. Um, sometimes you get a little unlucky because if you just stand at the top part of your zone, not like outside of the zone, there's two stairs. You stand on the top stair and just grab people as they try to leave. Uh, the eggs will fly out of the hand. Sometimes the eggs will fly out, out of your zone completely. But most of the time, I think the eggs will fall out of their hands and back into your base. So that's super fun. And of course, if you do uh, get out of the initial onslaught of egg grabbing and you're in last place, then it sucks to suck. You gotta you gotta go steal some eggs. <laughs> and good luck with that, because if people are defending, it, it's tough. It's uh, defending is a much easier job than stealing eggs, as long as the other team is playing decently. Uh, Jinxed. I'm also going to put in the C tier. It's another team game. This is a big team game. There's only ever two teams in it. And this game is usually like round two, I think. And so like you eliminate like 20 some people in this game because there's only two teams and it's split like 40 people or so. Um, but what this is, this is a, another type of tag game, not tail tag, but, um, one person on each team starts with a pink swirly cloud around them, and they just have to go and grab other people from the other team, and that, that will quote unquote jinx them. And you just have to be the team, uh, the game ends whenever one team is completely jinxed. And usually it's pretty close. Um, I've never seen a game where end where the other team has more than two people unjinxed um, because that's just how you know exponential stuff works because people will get jinxed at a kind of exponential rate on a very small scale. There's only like 20 people, but um, you know as more people get jinxed, there's only 40 people running around. You're gonna you know it's gonna be very hard to run into another person, especially on the other team, that is not jinxed. Um, so once, like, five people are jinxed, it, it goes up to, like, maybe two unjinxed pretty quickly, and then just finding that last one or two people is the the hectic part. And it's really just kind of a coin flip, I feel like. You're like, well, both people have one person left, and, you know, if you're not chasing them, you're just like, well, I don't know. Um, there is a lot of stuff you can do for your team, so I do like that. You can grab a lot of people, and you can individually contribute to helping your team a lot more than I think, like, Team Tail Tag that's right next to it in the C column, but again, it's just, I like the idea, 
I think maybe the execution might be a little weird. I would like to see it as well with, like, three teams. I think that would be cool. And then, you know, like, only one team gets eliminated. I think that would be uh, at least a neat idea to see how that would play out. And again, maybe they, maybe they tried that in their testing and they're like, this isn't super great. Um, because Jinxed is the only, well, no, it's not. There's uh, Fall Ball. Um, but, you know, Fall Ball is kind of based off of soccer and there's two teams anyway. But Jinx just feels kind of unique in the sense that it's the only game, asterisks, with two teams. Um, so Jinx, I'm going to put in the C tier. And moving on to Hoopsie Daisy, I might have lied about Egg Scramble being the best team game. I think Hoopsie Daisy is also a wonderful team game. This is one where, you know, everyone individually contributes, um, kind of like Egg Scramble, but I think in an even more special way. Like, you feel more personally responsible for contributing points in Hoopsie Daisy. Hoopsie Daisy, all you do is you, you just jump through hoops. And this game usually has three teams. I don't think it can have more or less. Um, Hoopsie Daisy, I like the level design. It's really cool. And there's also a gold spinning ring. I've never jumped through, but I assume it's probably worth three points. Um, but, you know, you just you, you and two other teams just run around for a minute and a half, two minutes, and you jump through hoops and you get points for your team. And whenever the timer hits zero, you just have to not have the least amount of points. Only one team gets eliminated. Uh, so Hoopsie Daisy, I love it. I think it's another excellent team game um you know it's not as hectic maybe as egg scramble but i think it really you feel you feel like you can contribute a lot to your team more than like team tail tag or jinx or um some of the other team games i think hoopsie daisy is you know it's a team game but you're really just doing your own thing all right there there are no zones or anything there's no base for your team. You just run around, and it's fine. Uh, fall ball, I'm going to put in the B tier because it's, it's soccer. Again, sorry, UK people, I'm not calling it football. Football's the touchdown game. This is soccer. Say what you will. <laughs> um, fall, fall ball is usually like the second to last game before the final round. Um, and there's just, it's, it's soccer. There are two teams. You try to score goals. Um, very rarely, I've only seen it once, there will be a golden soccer ball that comes down and it's worth, I don't even know if it's worth three points, I think it's worth even more, which is spooky because it, it rarely comes down, I've seen it once. I'm not sure what causes it to come down, maybe if one team is behind a bunch, it'll be like, here's a, a sort of way to get back in the game, because if you're down seven to zero in like the first minute, there's no chance. So I don't know what triggers the golden soccer ball to come down. There's also randomly a football will come down. Uh, that is also only worth one point. Um, but this, these big balls, um, th it's very, the connection, it makes it weird to kind of tell what exactly you're going to do. Especially when you and another guy on the other team are both diving at it at the same time. It's kind of like a, a 50-50 which way it's actually going to go. And I'm sure, you know, it's actually based off of, you know, who hit it second is going to go the other way. But it just feels a little weird, which is kind of why I'm going to put in the B tier. Because these big balls, especially in fall ball at least, it is weird. All right, but uh, the idea, awesome. Fall ball, fun. It's just the, the ball movement can be a little weird at times, probably just a connection issues and things, I don't know. Seesaw. I'm going to put in the... It really depends. I'm going to put in the C tier just because it depends. If you start in the front row, or sometimes the second row, Seesaw is a super duper race. If you start in the third or fourth row, then good luck, have fun. Um... So I think just because of that imbalance that you have zero control over, I'm going to put in the C tier. Um, seesaw, you know, it's a bunch of seesaws. You just got to get to the finish line. The first, Usually this is a first round game. It can be the second. Um, but you just got to be like the first 45 or first 33 people. 
to make it to the finish line and actually walk through the gate. Because <laughs> I've seen clips of people just standing at in front of the finish line, just waving to people, and then maybe something happens, someone grabs them, and they end up getting eliminated because they're being stupid. Um, but yeah, if you're in the front row, you can just run through the course, no problems. But if you're in the third or fourth row, the seesaws can be really stupid. <laughs> they can be leaning way up one way, and sometimes after a checkpoint, you can just be waiting there, like, for what seems forever, because the seesaw won't come down your way, and you just can't jump on it. And so you have two choices. You can either wait for it to eventually come down, or you can, like, backtrack and go to the other side. And I think if you've played it, you know what, what checkpoint. I'm thinking that's the first checkpoint, actually. Um, and it's just it's kind of imbalanced because of something you have no control over, which, again, is where you start off. And that's like, eh. And don't get me wrong, if you if you go in the first row, you could still make a mistake and end up getting screwed and having to respawn, and then you're in the same situation. But if you're decent at the game and you spawn in the first row, there's, like, no reason at all why you should be eliminated. You should have, like, no problem getting through the course at all. Um, so Seesaw, I do really like the idea but if you spawn in the back two rows, you're going to have a lot rougher of a time than if you start in the front two rows. Uh, rock and roll. This is A or S. I really like rock and roll. I'm going to put in the A tier. It's another team game, usually towards the end of the show. Like the fourth round, maybe the third round. I don't think so, actually. But rock and roll, there are three teams, and they have three tracks. you got to roll your ball to the net at the end of the course. <clears throat> um, but uh, once you get around 60% or 50% of the way through the course, um, then all the balls, it all converges into one final roll. Um there's no obstacles or anything, you just roll into the net. The only obstacles are the other team, because everyone goes into the same area, and that's where the real fun begins, um, because other people... There's usually a couple people per team that just don't roll the ball in their track, and they just go to the end and wait for other teams to roll uh, their ball down. And then they can try to stop them, push them back and stuff, and it leads to a lot more chaos, which is fun. Um, the other interesting thing I've noticed, and I find hilarious, is usually the team that has some guys waiting in the end zone, trying to hold off other people's balls, are usually the team that end up losing. And I find that hilarious. Um, so I don't even know if it's a good idea to, uh, you know, try to go to the end zone and push other people's ball backwards. Or not, because, again, nine times out of ten, I've seen the team that tries that end up losing anyway, and so it doesn't make much of a difference. The only thing I wish is that because there are three teams, whenever you get your ball to the net and you finish, you just it comes up that you qualified and you're gone from the level. I wish if you were the first team, you would still stay in the level to just randomly uh, screw over other teams to make their life difficult. Um, if you're a solo player, why would you want to do that? Again, just to be a jerk. But uh, I'm not sure how matchmaking works. I think if you join up in a party, um, they'll put you on the same team. But let's say maybe you don't. Um, a reason for that would be like, hey, I'm on the red team. My friend's on the blue team. I want to stay in the game so I can screw over the, the yellow team or whatever team I just didn't say. So that my friend's team can qualify and go on to the next round. I don't know. Um, so yeah, rock and roll, I really like that. Hoarders, just because I don't want perfect match to be alone, I'm going to put it in the D tier. It, excuse me. It might be worth putting in the C tier, I don't know. Again, I don't want to make perfect match alone. Again, they're not F games. Every game is fun. I have fun with every game. So I'm not saying by any means like, oh, I hate Hoarders. Hoarders sucks. Um, it's just maybe the least good 
of the 25 games. So Hoarders, this is another three-team game, and there are seven balls that, and these are big balls. These aren't little eggs like egg scramble. These are big balls. There are seven big balls that spawn in the middle, and you just gotta, you know, hoard the big balls in your zone. And whenever the timer hits zero, you just have to have not the least amount of balls, and you'll qualify. Um, but again, kind of like with fall ball, like I said, these big balls, um, they're a little weird to move around. And I think if you manage to get some balls, it's a lot easier to defend your balls in your zone than it is to steal a ball and push it into your zone. Like, you can have half your team trying to push a ball out of red team zone into the yellow team zone, um, but if there's just one guy defending, he can, like, easily bop the ball back into his own zone. And so it's just, like, a lot harder to steal a ball than it is to defend. And so, like, if you uh, get out of the initial wave of madness of pushing some balls into your zone and you're, like, in last place, then you gotta go steal some balls. And so a lot of your team is gonna be going to steal balls while everyone else just has to really focus on defending. And meanwhile, while you're out stealing balls, chances are the other two teams probably have a couple guys that are taking your last one or two balls into their zone, and then you just end up with zero, and you're like, well, this is great. Um, so Hoarders is a little it's a little iffy. Fall Mountain, this is the first final game, and the, the next four are the final rounds. Fall Mountain, I'm going to put in the B tier. Fall Mountain is the only final race, um, like obstacle course, whatever you want to call it. In Fall Mountain, I think a lot of people have echoed this sentiment that uh, it's just short. Like, for the final round, like, if this was a, if there was a finish line instead of a crown at the end, I think Fall Mountain would make a, a great, you know, race, like a lot of the other races. Uh, Hit Parade, Whirly Gig, whatever. Uh, but because it's the final round, you're playing for whoever wins the show, um, you have to grab the crown at the end, hold the right trigger button if you're on PS4, I don't know what you gotta press on Steam. Um, but you gotta grab the crown at the end, and, uh, it's just short. Um, that, that's really it. It's kind of anticlimactic, it's quick, it's short. I have zero problem with a race being the final game. I think this is perfectly fine. This is awesome. Um, but make it a little bit more than just a regular obstacle course, really. Which is kind of what it is. Add some extra stuff, I don't know, make it longer, do whatever you gotta do. Um, but it's just... That, that's really the big complaint with it. It's the final round, you're playing to win the whole show, and it's over in like 30 seconds, 40 seconds maybe. Uh, so it didn't make it a little bit longer, you know. The other three games are, are they last a little bit longer and stuff, and it's fun. The Fall Mountain, the race, I'm fine with the race being the final game. Um, it just needs to be a little bit longer, that's all. Hexagon, it's, you know, that Minecraft spleef game or TNT run, whatever you call it, it had a few names. But, you know, you're just running around, and as you step on a on a tile, a hexagon, um, it disappears. And there are several layers, um, and you just got to be the last person who is, you know, standing. Um, so hexagon is a lot of fun. There's a, different, there's a few different strats, and it, the strats can change depending on where you're at in the game and what floor you're on. Um, there's the, uh, the slow strat where you're like, if you're alone on a floor, maybe do the slow strat where you just jump from one tile to one tile and one tile and you just kind of live a lot longer. You're not really disappearing many tiles, but you know, if there are some other people on the floor, you might not want to do that because p other people could probably easily cut you off and before you know it, you're falling. Um. And speaking of that, that's kind of the other strategy, just run around and make as many tiles disappear as you can, and just try to be the last person standing. And again, the other bad strat with the slow jumping is, 
let's say you do that strategy on like one of the earlier floors, once you run out of tiles, you kind of have to get pretty lucky and hope that whenever you do fall down to another floor, that there are some tiles there for you. Because while you've been waiting on one of the top floors for a while, you know, there's several other floors beneath you that people have been running all around over, and there's hardly any tiles left on those floors. And you got to hope, you know, once you do leave the floor that you're on, you do have a tile underneath, underneath you that you can land on. So there's there's a lot of stuff with Hexagon. It, it's a fun game. It's TNT, Run, Spleef, whatever you call it in Minecraft. It, it's a great time. Jump Showdown is different than Jump Club. This is the final game. It's, you know, it's an alteration. I'm going to put it in the same tier as Jump Club. It's fun. It, it has a little bit more uh, to it. There are now two... Uh, I don't know what you call them, spinners, I'll call them spinners. There are two spinners on the bottom that you have to jump over. Um, instead of just jump club, there's just that one green one that makes a full rotation, but now jump showdown, you got two spinners on like, they cut half the, the wheel in half. So not only do you have two things you gotta jump over on the bottom, there's still two top, top planks, barriers, I don't know what you call them. Um, but, <clears throat> not only that, the floors also fall off of the game. And so I think there's maybe like eight different platforms, and at the, at the end, um, six will fall and you'll have two left. Whether the two are connected or not, I don't know, it depends. Um, but there will only be two platforms at the end, and so if people do survive to those final two platforms, maybe shenanigans in sh ensue, you know, people grabbing other people, trying to not let them jump or something, I don't know. Um, so it can get hectic if you're on, like, one of the final two platforms with a few other people. Jump Showdown, I think, is a, a fine, another fine, final round. Because uh, it can last a little bit, and again, kind of like Jump Clubs, or Jump Club, the, the spinners will get faster as time goes on, in addition to the floors falling and all that other stuff. Um, so yeah, Jump Showdown, fun time. <clears throat> Royal Fumble, I've only played this game for the first time, like, on the last day of the beta. I, I didn't even know it existed until, like, a few days before the last beta. <clears throat> All Royal Fumble is, again, it's another um, final game, but it, it's, it's tail tag, but with one tail. So you just have to, I think it's two minutes, so this is explicitly timed, this this final game is always going to last two minutes. Um, but, you know, whenever the timer hits zero, you just have to be the person with the tail, and you win the show. So I think it's it's an okay game. Really, you're just running around for two minutes. There's really not much you could do. And again, Royal Fumble is kind of eh, because this is a game... <clears throat> I guess kind of like tail... Well, it is tail tag. Uh, but I didn't mention this in tail tag, but... If it's two minutes long, which I think it is, you could just sit around for a minute, or even 90 seconds, a minute and a half, and do nothing, and you still got a chance to win the game. Um, so, I think that's maybe something, eh, especially for the final round. Um, I think it's a little kind of iffy that you could just sit around for nearly the whole game and end up still winning. Jump Showdown, Hexagon... Even Fall Mountain, there's there's something you always got to be doing something. Um, but Royal Fumble with the tail tag, you could just sit there for 90 seconds of the two minutes, and you still have a chance of winning the game. Because again, it's just if you end the game, if the timer hits zero and you have the tail, then you win. Um, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, it's a B tier, it's okay. I only played it, like, again, three or four times. I think it might be cool, maybe, like, a kind of King of the Mountain sort of thing. Or King of the Hill. Well, they do do mountains. Um, but, you know, like, you have to spend so much time in a certain zone, and the zones will change throughout the two minutes or something. I think that might be cool, like, or, <clears throat> or if you want to stick with the tail, like, you have to have the tail for the longest amount of time. Um, 
during the thing. I don't know. But Royal Fumble, as it is, I'd say it's a B tier. Dizzy Heights. All right, well, now it looks like we're getting into the races and stuff. Dizzy Heights, I'm going to put in the A tier. All the races, I love all the races. The races are all going to be excellent. So it's going to probably be a very heavy A tier pretty soon. But Dizzy Heights, um, these are all races to the finish. Um, you have to have X amount of people qualify. The last 15 or so people, depending on what round it is, will get eliminated. But this is a good one. You just got spinny wheels. Biggest piece of advice I have is don't try to go against the direction the wheel is spinning. Uh, that's pretty much it. It's really easy if you know what you're doing. Um, <clears throat> no matter what you do, if you try to jump or dive, um, just don't try to go against the direction of the wheel. Just follow the momentum and you'll be perfectly fine. There is a weird little middle section where some balls are coming rolling at you, uh, but I think that's fine. It's whatever. Dizzy Heights, there also is a bottom level. Um, so don't worry if you like fall down if especially like uh, I think it's the picture in the thumbnail the spot on the thumbnail That there is a bottom level there. So like, you can fall there will be something else, but Dizzy Heights is a cool race I like it slime climb I'm gonna put in the S tier. It's it's one of my favorite races just because it's unique Because um, this one This race you're not racing against other people you're racing against the slime, which is, you know, kind of like lava. There's a rising slime as as the race goes on. And all you have to do is make it to the finish line. Obviously, there's still other people in the game that will bump into you and stuff. But you don't have to be, like, the first, you know, 20, 30 people to qualify. You just have to make it to the finish line, and you're good. Uh, and if, the, if you go too slow, then the slime will get up to you. And you'll lose. Um, so this is just a really unique race in that you're not racing to be one of the first X amount of people to get to the finish line. You're racing against the environment itself, which is a, a, a unique idea. Um, at least for the first 25 games, this is a unique race in uh, that aspect. So I like Slime Climb. It's, it's, it's a fun time. DoorDash. Also, I'm going to put in the S tier, perfectly exemplifies what Fall Guys is about, chaos, madness, and a whole lot of fun. Um, this is probably the game most people have seen, if they've seen anything about the game. Um, all it is, is you just got to race through doors and make it to the finish line. This one, again, you have to be one of the first X amount of people to make it to the finish line. But, some doors are walls, other doors will be smash smashable and you can proceed through to the next set of doors um, and so you know if you're kind of in the middle of the pack or especially the end of the pack life is going to be hard because especially towards the middle or the end set of doors people don't even bother finding the second or third door that's smashable they all just funnel in through the one door people are like i'm not wasting my time hitting a wall I'm just going to go through the door that I know is a door. And then you get like, you know, 40, 50 people trying to funnel through one door and it's just madness and chaos and it's a lot of fun. And it, it, it leads to funny moments. So DoorDash, it's, it's a, it perfectly shows kind of what Fall Guys is about. I love it. Gate Crash. Again, most of these, most of these races I'm going to probably put in the A tier because they're all, you know, fun. But nothing really sets them super apart from other races. Kind of like DoorDash is fun. It's super chaotic and hectic and fun. Slime Climb, you're not racing against the other characters necessarily. So most of the races I'm probably just going to put in the... Uh, you know what? I don't really have much to say about the races too. So I'm just going to put these... Gate Crash, Whirly Gig, Hit Parade. I'm also just going to put those in the A tier right now. Um... Because they're just, they're different obstacle courses. You got different, you know, obstacles. Whirly gig, you have swinging fans is a big thing. And then you have circular platforms with the same kind of, uh, I don't know, spinners um, from Jump Showdown and stuff. Uh, and you just got to jump over those. And so that's the thing with that. Gate crash, you have gates 
going up and down. You just gotta, you know, jump through the gates whenever they're down and not up. They have a pattern, so it's easy to kind of realize, hey, if I'm like, you know, five seconds away from the door, what gate is going to be down five seconds from now? And, you know, it really feels like sometimes you're playing with two-year-olds that don't understand that concept and they just run right towards an opening gate and you're like, what are you doing? Like, it will come down fairly quickly and you'll be fine, but just try to go as fast as possible, you know? Hit Parade is also just another standard obstacle course. You got these little uh, planks or barriers things at the end that'll hit you as you climb up the slime. And there's other stuff. You got these balls in the background swinging back and forth you want to not get hit by. Um, all the races, I think the races are excellent. I have no problems with them. Uh, they just have different obstacles, things that set them apart. But ultimately, they're a race, and it's fun. Fruit Shoot is a survival, well, it's, it's sort of a race, but is, is, it's, I find it more different than these, uh, other races that I just mentioned, um, because all you're doing is running up a conveyor belt that's, you know, going downward, so you're running against the conveyor belt while also having several fruits shooting at you and falling down the conveyor belt, and you have to avoid them or face your untimely Demise. Is untimely a word? I don't know. Who cares? Words don't matter. Um, so Fruit Shoot, I think, is an awesome game. It's really, it, it's, it's fun. It's hectic. Um, it, wasn't there like a Halo minigame or a GTA minigame that's sort of like this, uh, where you get like cars and just random things shooting at you and you gotta climb up? This has been a, this this concept has been executed before in other games. and it, it's, it's fun in this setting. As well, it continues to be excellent. So, fruit shoot, I think, is an S tier uh, round uh, because it's just fun. It is awesome. It's not awesome, but it's it's hilarious watching other people get hit by fruit, and it's unfortunate when you watch yourself get hit by fruit. <laughs> and it's a good time. And the last game we have is tiptoe. I believe this is usually a fourth round game. I've never seen it earlier. Um, but all it is is you have this really large grid of square platforms. Um, but a lot of them are just fakes. Um, so you have to find a path from the beginning to the end. Um, actually, tiptoe, I'm going to put the B tier. I, I lied. Um, because really, once you get to the final few squares of the path, then you're just kind of like, uh, you, you're just, all anyone does in tiptoe is stand on the last platform discovered to actually exist, and then everyone just huddles on that platform until someone gets pushed, or is brave enough to walk left, right, or forward, and figure out which platform is the next actual tile of the path. Um, and so really, if everyone is there and they say like nine people qualify, you just got to hope you're far enough in this whole group of crowded people on one tile to uh, be close enough to the finish line that you can jump. Because usually if everyone, let, let, like let's say the game didn't immediately end um, after so many people qualified or got eliminated. Um, this, the game would probably be over, like, from the first person crossing the finish line to the last person crossing the finish line, there'd probably be, like, three seconds, <laughs> at least. And there are some people that just maybe don't make the jump to the finish line, which you have to pretty much not press the jump button to do. Um, or someone got really unlucky and wanted to be brave towards the end and found a fake tile. Uh, but usually I'd say for the most part, if the game is played where everyone just crowds on the last known tile, there'd be like three seconds between the first person entering and the last person entering. And it's just, again, it's chaotic, which is what about Fall Guys is about. But, you know, at the end, it's just kind of like, well, I hope I'm far enough towards the front of the crowd to be able to jump to the finish line after we've discovered the path. All right. So... 
And that's it. That's the first, uh, the initial 25 games coming out at launch for Fall Guys, which is released now today. Go buy it on Steam. It's $20 on PlayStation if you have PS Plus. It's freaking free. Go download it. Go play it right now. It's super. It's the best. It has a battle pass where you unlock cosmetics and, and other things. And, and guess what? On PS4, it's free on PS Plus. And for everybody, the battle passes are free. You don't even got to pay $10 for battle passes. Everything's pretty much earnable with in-game currency. There are things you can buy. Kudos. I think there's kudos packs, which you can buy if you want to speed things up. But you earn kudos just by playing the game. And you earn a decent amount of kudos. It's not like, hey, here's two kudos for playing the game. Um, every outfit or cosmetic cost... 10,000 kudos. So you can get two kudos by playing a game or buy a 5,000 kudos. It's, it's probably not going to be like that. Um, you know, everything is earnable and purchasable by just playing the game. It's super, I think it's super gamer, consumer friendly, and it's just, it's fun. It's fun. Go watch videos, go play it again. If you're on PS4 and you have PS Plus, it's freaking free. There's literally zero reason to download it, or to not download it. Uh, so go download it, go play it, it's available now. I'm so ex this, this is the best game. I love it. <laughs> um, so this is a game, Scott, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, tier List Tuesday, I know I didn't do one last month. I don't know, I'm going to put an update video for my YouTube channel out pretty soon because I've made some decisions about it. But either way, go check me out on Twitch. I stream again for now because it's the summer. Every weekday, 12 noon Eastern to 2 p.m., so a couple hours every weekday. Um, go check me out there. Same name, GamingScott, twitch.tv slash GamingScott. Follow me on Twitter, also GamingScott. Have a wonderful day, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave like, comment, whatever. Do all this stuff. Uh, again, check me out on Twitch. I care more about that than subscribing to my YouTube channel. I'll probably put a YouTube video out soon about uh, life. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you around. Bye-bye.